Hi, welcome to Potentially Genius, where we, Tomorrow Lab, take what is probably a potentially genius idea and turn it into more of a potentially genius thing. It's more of a race against time to see how real we can make something in the shortest amount of time possible. We have a four phase process to do this. We start with discovery, then we go into ideation, followed by prototyping, and then a final presentation to our potential genius. So let's get into it. We have a new guest, Dan Sachs of Noodle Loaf. How's it going, Dan? It's going great. How are you doing, Pevin? Good to see I'm, you. Good to I'm see your squad. Great. What is Noodle Loaf? It's a music education podcast, but the kids don't know that. They just think they're having fun. They think they're playing, singing along or moving or doing rhyming games or uh, anything that kind of involves them in, in the listening of the show. What's your potentially genius idea? I want to invent an instrument for kids that empowers them um, and has rhythmic elements, melodic elements, improvisational elements. They can play the thing and it sounds good and maybe even interact with it in kind of a cool way. To what extent do you envision this product looking like an actual instrument? To me, it doesn't need to look like an existing instrument. In some ways, like the, the kid instrument market is a little bit limited because it's always uh, like a sort of like dumbed down, like little little version of a, an adult instrument. Yeah. Um, but there's no reason why it has to be a tiny piano or a tiny, you know, whatever. Uh, I think this is a potentially genius idea, but let's go see if we can make it a potentially genius thing. Each of us went out to do some research to look at different types of uh, ways of making sound, ways of picking up sound electronically, ways of transforming sound. And so we're gonna jump in and look at that research. I looked into force sensing resistors or FSRs for short, and basically they're exactly what they sound like. Depending on how hard you press them, it delivers a different signal. You can imagine that the harder the kid presses, maybe there's a bigger sound, or even it could be moving up a scale. Um, so it goes da 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 da, whatever. And then we have a ribbon controller and pressure sensor set up. So there's some things we can play with there. We talk about MIDI. Basically, you're just sending numbers through an instrument to a computer so that uh, the computer reads what notes you're producing, which kind of notes how hard you hit the note. It's converting some electrical input or user input into numbers, and then the computer will later reproduce the music. If you're having something like a FSR, it can essentially detect 128 steps of force. Although I'm a keyboard guy, I started thinking about strings because to Dan's point about authenticity, strings have this really cool analog response where you can see it vibrating, like you can hear it, you hit the thing, it does the thing. The problem with string instruments is that they require tuning uh, unless there's only one string <laughs> because Although it may not be in tune to concert pitch, it's always in tune relative to itself. Uh, and the intervals are, are fixed. So the simplest version of this is a diddly bow. It's an instrument you can make out of a two by four and a tin can, basically. There are tapping instruments. You can tap on strings if they're on a fretboard. The, that instrument in the middle is a recently invented instrument called the harpeggi. It uses capacitive sensing and individual pickups per string so that whenever you're not pressing on a string, it mutes that string. So you can play it without overlapping notes. Love the research on this one. Super fun. Very excited. Maybe like like each of us could come back with an original instrument idea. We are uh, going through concepts this week. Fire away, guys. Uh, I built a diddly bow. It's really large. I have it right here. And Jesse, if you apply different tension to it, does it change the pitch? It does, yeah. So here's a tuning peg. Um, this thing right here controls the pitch. In general, I'm beginning to see like a potential to have like a, like it's a bit of a circus, but like a diddly bow where like you have different modules you can attach to like make the string do different things. What if we had a board that has these little rubber mounts sticking up from it? and a kid could choose, like they have a collection of shapes in a box and they could mount those shapes onto the pegs and switch them out and see what sort of sounds they make. And as you can see, you've got these keys on both sides of the box and that enables play for both a kid and a friend or a kid and their parent. So they could both kind of jam on both sides. My concept looks a little weird. Multiple bellows on the 
basically a flat surface and I can like hammer all those to create like different sounds. If I have five, of course, it can be a pentatonic scale. Basically, there's a hammer, it's like welcoming you to pick it up and then to hammer some stuff. In this one, the idea is that you would space out uh, keys mm -hmm. along a diddly bow. So we start with the same diddly bow structure. I'm imagining this one with a metal string just because I want a guitar pickup because I like the grunge. And along that string would be capos. And when you press down on each one, it will shorten the string by that much. And then underneath those keys is a common like striker key. So that triggers a, a piano style hammer to hit the, the wire. And then I was also thinking that if these things are on like a rack of ribs, you can flip up the rack of ribs and then you could just use it like a diddly bell. And one thing I do like about it that um, I see in, in all of our diddly bow concepts is that you get a sense of like uh, where the, the intervals are on the wire. Um, I think that that sort of like automatic physics lesson uh, is really cool and it's something that's lost hidden inside a piano. Here's a, a different type of keyboard action that we maybe hadn't considered and I didn't really realize was possible until recently. A very old instrument called the clavichord. It's one of the simplest keyboard actions you can have. It's just a, a key balanced on a pivot and at the end it has something called a tangent which is a little piece of brass or something sharp uh, and if the string is under enough tension and you hit it with something sharp and hard like that, it will sound at the length that you hit it. So this is called a fretted clavichord, meaning you can have multiple keys play on the same string. Italy Bow is a great test platform for us. So let's get a, I mean, if you were able to, maybe we can get a few things strung up across the, um, build a little raised bed for magnetic pickups, and then also see what your piezo pickups sound like. Yeah, I can put a few strings on there. Uh, happy prototyping and uh, looking forward to seeing what we uh, pull together next meeting. So Eileen, you're going to take us through some research about the design and the form of this. This idea basically has piano keys, but they're centered in the middle and um, they're held up by a spring coil, which has its legs kind of like that. So as the kid pushes it down, it you know, comes together. And there's a little knob at the end of the key there, so the kid doesn't press too hard to break the string by accident. The idea is that there are two playable areas on the left and right of the keys, so they can do this with a friend, they can do it with a parent, and so it's kind of fun that way. And the keys can adopt different shapes and also indicate the two notes that the string could produce, depending on where it's pushed down. I see, so it's a center strike to make it resonate. Exactly. What I think is the secret sauce here is making it electric, yeah. right? Like, I don't know of any kids' toys that are electric. They're more tinny and tanky and twanky. Yeah. And like, this is a chance to give them something that's analog electric, right? Where would you place this as far as like a mechanical complexity to prototype? Is it at a scale of 10? It's like a two or a three. Yeah, two or three. Favorite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's build it out. Let's do it. are super lucky to be joined by our guest, uh, Dan Sachs, host of Noodle Loaf. Hey, Dan, welcome back. Hi. We know that you wanted to create a new kind of musical instrument, yep. something that kids could play, and we decided we want to do something around string instruments. This is the thing. Mm. Okay. It's basically a diddly bow, huh. but also electric, and we've given it keys. Each of these oh, things okay. is a key on the diddly bow. Oh. And uh, each one hits the string in a way uh, similar to a clavichord. So we smashed up an electric guitar, a diddly bow, and a clavichord to make an instrument. You can play the keys uh, and get different sounds. The keys are rearrangeable, so you can change which notes are being played and how many notes there are on the keyboard. 
when you uh, tap them, they shorten the string and strike it at the same time, creating the tone for that line. That's how it works. Very cool. You can basically trill by holding one key down and playing a higher key. And so when you play that higher key and drop it down, because it's vibrating in that line, sounds and you can arpeggiate going up and down yeah i love how i mean how visual it is in terms of as you were saying like uh, kind of understanding the sort of yeah, the relationship between i mean the, the the pitch that you're getting and how it divides up the string to make it shorter that's that's really unique and and very cool but because it's electric and you can add some grunge to it you can sort of get those thirds and 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 other elements out of the sound um, by sort of strumming it and playing it harder. So you can play it soft, very gently, and you can play it really hard. And then because it's open, you can also pluck it and hit it with other things. And it sounds great when you hit it with stuff. This is gonna give you a good tone each time. Sweet. This is a basically all-in-one pickup, amplifying, and an outputting setup. Uh, on the far left, it's a magnetic pickup. So the signal from that uh, magnetic pickup is really weak so that we need to amplify it preamp to a line level so that it's good enough for it to be fed into a next amp, which is sparked by noisy cricket. We source it from DigiKey thanks to our sponsor, DigiKey. <laughs> and what's cool about this product is the knob itself, it's a, uh, on a switch too. So as long as you um, turn it, crank it up, it turns on the signal, it turns on the device, and also you can deal with the volume with it. And I really want to throw a wah pedal on here for the record. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what's fun about this is, you know, it basically, it, it's, this is essentially a guitar amp. And because of that, there are many other accessories that exist that are like 20 bucks, you know, some of them even cheaper that you could put in line between your speaker and your, um, uh, your preamp that, that modify that signal. So you can pitch bend it and um, change the tone of it, uh, things like that. In case you wanted to have like, I'm imagining like, let's say you had four of these in a room, you kind of want everyone else to have a different sound, even if you're playing on the same scale. And that way you, you, you jam like a band. If we had a little more time um, with the positioning right now, um, they slide up and down the rail by unscrewing this little screw here and then yeah, you slide them and then re-secure them. But in the future, if we, you know, could think about this more, um, something that a kid might be more capable of doing would be perhaps pushing um, like a little button in to clamp it down, sort of like the clamps we have in the shop, and then to release them, you could squeeze and pull and then move them along the rail. So that would be a more simple interaction mm -hmm. for a child. The keys are really, really simple. So we played around with sprung leaf things that looked a lot more like um, uh, piano keys. And what we ended up with here is something much simpler. It's a scissor mechanism. These are laser cut and 3D printed, but in the future, uh, they could be uh, a few pieces of injection molded plastic. The idea being that you could make these, you know, at Fisher Price costs with Fisher Price tolerances. That way you have a set of keys that you can pop in and out very easily. On this iteration, we didn't have any like note demarcations on here, but there's definitely potential for us to add graphics to this to label like what the notes actually are and um, also supplement the whole labeling system by like maybe having prongs that specifically call out like the pentatonic scale. Um, so there could be fun graphic design involved in further version. Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's a beauty in, in its simplicity, but I haven't seen anything that that really plays like that. I feel like this is totally one of those instruments where like you get it for your for your little kid, but like after they go to bed, like you take it down to the basement, and, like hook all your guitar pedals into it and invite some friends over. And you, 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 there's, a, there's sort of an adult version where you can really kind of space out with it. So uh, this show is called Potentially Genius. The idea is that guests bring us a potentially genius idea and we try and turn it into a potentially and maybe even actually genius thing. So the question for you, Dan Sachs, is did we make a genius thing here today? 
Yes, you did. You made something that is potentially genius. <laughs> Good job, geniuses. <laughs> It's working. It's working. <laughs> Genius. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much to our guest. Thanks so much to DigiKey for sponsoring this. Listen, if you guys have potentially genius ideas, not your big idea, but just like a fun idea or something that you want to see us make, put it in the comments. We're going to be reading them. We're going to be looking for likes, upvotes, or whatever you kids call it. And the ones that like get the most traction, we might actually bring onto the show. We'll reach out to you, you get to be a guest, and we'll build the thing that's in your head. That's our job. Also, if you have any thoughts about our process, comments, criticisms, we don't care, tell us down below. Yeah, and if you wanna see more of our work, go over to tomorrow-lab.com uh, or you can find us on Instagram. Thanks again. Bye.